For the first time in human history, we have the opportunity to eliminate cervical cancer. For documentary maker Sue Collins, the opportunity to tell a positive story about cancer was just too good to pass up. But it doesn't have to be this way. I really got drawn to this project because I've been really interested in public health, global health, and particularly health inequity for many years. But then to find out that there's a cancer story that's positive and could lead to the elimination of a cancer it is such an extraordinary opportunity. The women that I met in a variety of different countries around the globe, they all had such similar stories and they're all young. They were young women with families and they were facing, you know, one of the biggest health challenges you can to overcome cancer and treatment and the financial burden and all the ramifications. It was just heartbreaking to, to see women suffering from this disease. HPV is just one of the many viruses that can infect us and the HPVs come in many different flavours but four or five of them can infect the genital tract and these viruses normally our body gets rid of but if we fail to get rid of them they can change the cells in the genital tract to become cancerous. The research done by scientist Professor Ian Fraser led directly to the development of the HPV vaccine. The vaccine against HPV prevents infection with the virus if it's given before the woman encounters the virus, so that by preventing the infection with the virus, the cancer can be completely prevented. I had the vaccine. I was sort of uh, a little bit older. I'd already had sex by that point, so may have already been exposed to one of the dangerous HPV strains. But for me, it got checked regularly and it got picked off. It was a bit surreal. I didn't really connect with it for a while. It seemed I was too young. When Kirsty Brown was just 26, a routine pap smear returned a devastating result. The usual treatment for cervical cancer is a full hysterectomy and potentially radio, um, but because it was caught so early, my oncologist actually offered a new treatment, which is just removal of the cervix. Um, so I had that and they tested to see whether um, I needed any more treatment and I didn't, which was amazing. Long recovery, struggled to walk for a while, and it was, yeah, pretty, as I said, a lot at 26. Uh, and the concept that I might not be able to have a baby was a lot to deal with uh, for a while, but I've since had one, so that was pretty exciting. Cervical cancer is difficult to diagnose, first of all, because it's asymptomatic for the most of the time you have it. You, you don't know you've got it until unfortunately it's spread and by that time it's really very difficult to get rid of. It's a cancer that hides. The problem of course is that you're doing something now to prevent a problem in 10 to 20 years time and that's never as appealing from a political or an organisational point of view as doing something where you get an immediate benefit. But having said that, cervical cancer kills a very significant number of women worldwide every year. 300,000 women die of cervical cancer, mostly in their 30s, when they're still rearing their kids. The documentary Conquering Cancer highlights the challenge in delivering an HPV vaccine to children between the ages of 10 and 12 worldwide. The dilemma is that it's never been administered in this age group before. Most women know some, particularly in the developing world, most women know somebody who's died of cervical cancer. It's such a common disease amongst women. So that there's a strong demand for the vaccine programs. What's needed is an effective way of delivering them. And we saw through the, the, the videos that were produced for the movie that it varies a lot from country to country how effective that can be. Many of the women that we spoke to, um, they were very adamant that, that women should get their children vaccinated whenever it was possible to follow up with their screenings and they really wanted to be able to share their experience so that other women could learn from it and they felt very passionate that they didn't want other women to end up in the situations that they've had to endure. In 2007, Australia became one of the first countries to roll out a national HPV program with the long-term goal of eradicating the cancer by 2030. There are many countries have now started immunising 10 to 12 year old girls, but the quality of the follow-up 
in Australia is very high and therefore we've got good quality data. And that's what's persuaded the World Health Organization to take on the challenge of now delivering programs of vaccination worldwide because we could give them quality data to show that it works. A woman dies every two minutes from cervical cancer, dies, you know, and we think, oh, pap smear, I don't wanna get a pap smear. We're so lucky to be in a country where the vaccine is free, the screening is free, so utilize it, please.